<laughs> there we are. Good afternoon. Yay! It's homecoming! <laughs> Good afternoon. I am Jacinta Bruton, and I'm here with Harold Bell. Today, on Friday, October 18th, just a week away, not even a week now, starting Sunday, the students start their homecoming, and Monday, um, and then Thursday, so let me start theirs, we're in homecoming spirit here. Okay, so we are joining with you, to, I'm joining with you today to talk with Harold Bell for our final and fourth and final Fit for Hire career, career webinar, webinar live chat. Um, okay, this week's topic is it's showtime. How to capitalize on the first ever Hire Spelman Career Expo. Our topic expert today is Harold Bell. So let me just tell you a little bit about Harold and we're going to get right into it, okay? Harold Bell is beginning his 13, 13 years, Harold, wow, here at Spelman as the director of Spelman College's Office of Career Planning and Development. Mr. Bell's 26-year background combines a unique blend of experiences, including higher education, not-for-profit, and Fortune 500 companies. As the director of career planning, Mr. Bell's goal is to provide quality services and programs that produce highly skilled competitive candidates for hiring organizations and graduate slash professional schools. Welcome, Harold. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so this is the fourth and final series in our four-part series called Fit for Hire. So I, I've been working with you. You're the director of career planning and uh, career planning here at Spelman. But we've spoken about, in our first series, we spoke with Keith Webb about um, career alignment and purpose. Okay. How do you make all that work? Um, then we talked with Kia Smith, class of 2004, yay Spellman, um, about having a professional web, social web presence because that's important, right? Absolutely. Then finally, last week we had two topic experts. We spoke with Samara Malik from Deloitte Consulting, and we spoke with Erica Knight in your department, um, <laughs> and graduate of uh, graduate girl, planning, right? Graduate school. Graduate schools, okay. Um, about how to making sure it's right, getting your personal statements, your cover letters, and your resumes tight. Yes. For this career expo. Right. Okay, now we're joining with you because we're first revealing, drum roll, revealing who the employers are. But then, have you ever been to a career fair and you're wondering, how do I make the most of this? Or I'm just here and I don't know what to do after the career expo. We're talking with you about that today. Okay. All right, so let me kick it off. All right, y'all. You, have you been waiting to know who the employers are? Virtual yes, nod your head. Okay. I'm going to tell you. Here we go. The employers are Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee, Ogilvy, CIA, that's the Central Intelligence Agency out in Washington, D.C., the Atlanta Braves, Chick-fil-A, Regions Bank, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, Fulton County Government, Allstate Insurance Company, Credit Union of Atlanta, American Institutes for Research, Bank of America, Wells Fargo Company, Cigna, Dover Staffing, Edelman, Southern Company, Georgia Power, and last but not least, United Acceptance. Yay for our employers! Thank you all. Big shout out to all of our employers for Higher Spelman Career Expo. So now they're revealed. They're revealed, Harold. Now everybody knows who's coming. Yes. Okay, now let's talk with you. All right. Get right into it. So um, if you see me looking down and have my pin out, y'all y'all know you, if you watch the past three videos, I'm taking notes because I like to recap with you at the end. Okay. All right, so Harold. Okay. First things off. It's yes. going to be next Thursday. We're less than a week away, mm -hmm. right? And this is open to all the Spelman alumni and all Spelman students, mm -hmm. right? So the employers vary in industry and the type of jobs they have mm -hmm. offering, right? Because we have students that still need internships and things. Right. Let's go right to it. What tips do you mm -hmm. have regarding attire okay. for the Career Expo that you can give to our population? Okay. First and foremost, I always share with individuals that this is not a, you're not going, uh, it's not a party, it's not a, it's it's it, it's it's a professional event. It, it, it's it's a uniform that you're wearing, and so it's not about a fashion show. Uh, it's about a uniform that you wear. So there's a there's sort of a standard uniform that's universally accepted 
mm-hmm. at a career fair. Uh, there are certainly things that look nice in other settings, but this particular uh, attire that I'm going to be referring to is just sort of universally accepted. So typically, if we're talking about a, a female, we're basically talking about a business suit, mm-hmm. two-piece business suit that can be skirt or pantsuit. Uh, we're talking about not stiletto heels. Uh, okay. We're talking about <laughs> Wait, pause. Not stiletto heels. Not, not stiletto heels. Comfortable, comfortable shoes. Well, why not stiletto heels? Uh, because generally, uh, and again, this is not Mr. Bell's rules. That's the perception is that's not necessarily considered professional. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, those are sort of unwritten okay. rules. Okay. Um, generally, something much lower, two inch, uh, I guess, pump. Okay. You know, something like that, but not something like that. Or the okay. big clog heels, you know, none, 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 none of that. Of that. That's I, good. Again, it's not that those things are not attractive and what have you in other settings. It's just that in this setting, you want to have a professional image. That's good. Um, uh, any type of cologne or perfume you want to keep to a minimum. Some people will say oh. not at all. I just say keep it to a minimum. You don't want to walk in the room and, and fumigate the room <laughs> and be distracted. Or sometimes, We're not best control. Or, 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 or sometimes people, the interviewer may have allergies. And, oh, and, and, good and, point. And, and so there's so, a real practical right, right, way yeah, yeah. And so you don't want them sneezing the whole time and right. coughing and wheezing while you're trying to get them to because hear. Because then that's the only thing they're going to remember. That's the only thing they'll remember mm-hmm. is that person that came in really fumigated. <laughs> um, and then just in terms of just the basic stuff, basic neatness, hair neat, Okay. Um, you know, a good hygiene, uh, you might want to have a breath mint, you know, mm-hmm. those kinds okay. of things. Uh, just, you know, just very, very uh, neat sort of appearance. Is the idea behind that, because I want to make sure we're clear, the idea mm-hmm. behind it is, mm-hmm. is this, is, would be, this be an accurate quote, a statement? The idea is that you don't want to do anything to distract from who you are and what you're bringing. That's exactly right. Okay. That's exactly right. You okay. don't want any distractions. Oh, okay. by the way, earrings, I would keep them to studs. Okay, how about these? Would these pass? Uh, I think those are okay. These are okay. Nice, you see? Nice, you see uh, my studs? Yeah. This is okay. <laughs> any jewelry, nice pearl necklace. Oh, okay. But not anything gaudy, not anything dangling, not anything making lots of noise. Okay. Is there a stockings rule? Like if you're going to wear a suit, you must wear stockings? Hosiery, yes. Hosiery, yeah. uh, I, I think the, uh, and I may be, uh, I'm going to say may, maybe flesh tone. Okay, kind of okay. Uh, but again, nothing. That's more subjective. Right, right, right. right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. no, this, this nothing, the, the whole idea is nothing too gaudy. I mean, again, mm-hmm. it's, this is not a fashion show. It's, it's a uniform. Got it. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay, so that's the attire. Mm-hmm. What are some other things? I know... Um, just in looking up and preparing to talk to you, I wanted to be on point talking to you because I know you're our guru on campus. <laughs> you do your research. Uh-huh. Is that what does that mean? Okay, I can't emphasize how important company research is. It's it's important to the company and it's important to you as an individual. We'll look at both sides of that. Let's start with the company. Company research is an indication of, of your interest in the company. Okay, and so. Um, it's 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 you want to make sure you know things like key personnel in the company. Uh, you definitely want to know who the CEO is. You don't want to go and not know who the CEO is. You want to know what their products or services are. Uh, you want to know who their competition is. Uh, if they're a for-profit organization, you want to know like what their profits were maybe the previous year. And if you have uh, information for the current year, you want to know th- things like that as well. Okay. Um, you want to know something about current events. And this is what people often miss. Is that is, right? Is they don't look to see what current events are going on. And so generally the, at company, the company at the company. Yeah. Current events at the company, the not in the world right. news. Well, same one in the same. One in the same. Okay. The same. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I'm talking about. Actually sort of what's going on in the world news mm-hmm. uh, with this company. Because there could be something major going on and that's your opportunity to say that you're aware, right. you're really honed in on right. on that uh, particular uh, company. And so you wanna make sure you're doing things like that. Yeah, okay. Um you want to look at the positions that are out there. I mean, okay. you know, you don't ever want to approach them and say, "Well, what you got for me?" <laughs> uh, the answer, even though they may not say, is nothing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, you should have some sense of what the company offers. You should, okay. uh, most companies have some sort of careers page where you can mm-hmm. actually see the type of careers they have, 
Um, sometimes there may even be a career traje trajectory that's outlined uh -huh, on the yes. site, so okay. you kind of see where things are going. So those are some of the things, a few of the things you want to know in terms of the company. As it relates to you, um, if you're interested in that particular company uh, that you're doing research on, now you have Intel to actually now use in your interview. Uh -huh. Uh, you, it can help you shape your resume, mm -hmm. shape your conversation. Now, when you say Intel, mm -hmm. what do you mean? What so you now mean you Intel? have information about that company uh -huh. that might be critical in terms of shaping your resume to be appealing to them. Okay, that makes it specific to the company. To, to the company. Okay. Uh, and all, or, or I know we say specific to things that might interest the company. Okay, got it. Okay, got and it. so things that they would find you know, may, maybe certain uh, words that they use or certain okay. terms they use. Okay, right. Uh, you, you can learn their little company jargon. You can do, from, you okay, can wordsmith your resume to read that way. And so they're like, they feel like they're looking at someone uh, that's appealing to them because they're speaking their language. Yes, and, th and that's a good thing because companies want people that fit into their culture. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Okay. And even if you, let's just say, put that resume online, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of recruiters now, um, we're not we're now talking sort of outside of the career fair, but at some point it gets to that point. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing keyword searches. They're looking for certain terms. Oh, that's good. And, and, okay. And, and so, um, you know, we often talk about uh, people say, ah, oh, resume went to the black hole. Well, one of the reasons it may be the black hole is because uh, you sort of created the hole you went into by not really kind of speaking to that particular. So doing the research about the company right, helps right, you speak right, their right, language right, right. Speak their so language. that you don't go into the perpetual black, black hole. hole. That's right. That's right. Okay. Okay. So you spoke about the attire and mm -hmm. how it's basically a uniform. And I think that's a mm -hmm. great way to look at it because when you have a uniform, it's something that is standardized across the board so that the, you don't that so that your attire is not distracting right. from who you are and what you're bringing to the company. That's absolutely right? right. Then we talked about doing the research for uh, mm -hmm. for the company itself, mm -hmm. world events um, about the things that are going on with uh -huh. the company uh -huh. itself, uh -huh. things going on in the world mm -hmm. itself, mm -hmm. and then you specifically talking to their language. Right. Absolutely. And I'll add to that. Um, market share, what's their market share in their space, you know, where are they in, in oh, terms okay. of, you know, their field, where are they, which leads to competition, who's their competition, who's Oh, that's market? good, you should know their competition. You should know their competition. You know their competition. Why are they, they their competition, you know, and, and what makes them possibly unique from their competitors. That's good. So these are things that when you speak to these topics, the employer knows you've done research. Right. You can't just wing that. That, right. You have to have done. So to that point, there we named so many employers just now. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be beneficial to do that for all of them or would it be? So how do you pace yourself at a career? So our okay. career expo is from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Thursday, October 24th. Okay. So that's a long time. So in a best case scenario, mm -hmm. uh, and right now, of course, you've only heard who the companies are. Right. The best case scenario Sometimes the employers actually share the types of um, positions that they'll actually be recruiting mm -hmm. for. So that gives you some sense of who might be of interest to you. But in the absence of that information, mm -hmm. you would have to go to the website and actually look at the you careers and work. see if, and again, this is back to company research. Yes. Do they have the type of positions that you potentially are looking for? Okay. okay because again, I, I just want to stress so much: you do not want to walk up to an employer and say, "What you got for me? What do you have?" Mm -hmm. Because you should have some sense of what they have. It's not like the right. information is not available. That's good. And so, um, so I, it's just very important to, to. So, in the absence of the information, you may have to go to all in order to see, because there is time. Yes. Hopefully you have time to go and look. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I like how you did that. I like you like how you did that. You worked it all in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you pace yourself by looking at who's coming. Mm -hmm. Oh, and let me say this. Yes. And then you want to reduce the list. So. Uh, okay. So you know, and really, you know, you, you sometimes your your objective is not necessarily to see everybody. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, if you've done your research, you probably don't want to see everybody, everybody. because everybody is, does not necessarily have what you want. Well, will the employer stop and say, well, that person's going to every single table. Does that have any effect on anyone, or are they not really thinking uh, that? 
I can't really say okay. that that's necessarily a negative. They don't okay. necessarily know okay. what their motive is. I, okay. I may personally know that. Personally, okay. why I went right. to that table. Okay. So, so I mean, if you did go every right, single right, 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 place, right. it's still not bad. No, it's not necessarily okay. bad, but you should have a targeted search. And, 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 and often what we tell uh, students is have your top, say, three to five, and then it doesn't just hurt to just kind of walk around and just see what other things you know might be going on. Now, now many times, of course, our student fairs are, are fairly large, so I mean they have to, okay. you know, they can walk around and kind of see what, see. Other, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, but, uh, But yeah. is that advice, will that advice apply to alumni as well? Three to, pick your top three to five? Yeah, because again, uh, your, your target is not everybody. Right, okay. Uh, and I think you can lose focus uh, trying to, trying to, you know, you don't want too many irons in the fire. Fire, got uh, it, okay. And, and so you want to really be good at three to five. Okay, okay. What do you need to bring? Okay. to the career uh, fair and the career expo and I'll I'll say something after you say that. Okay. Just okay. saying that so I don't forget to say it. So okay. <laughs> obviously, a, well, I was say obviously a, some sort of portfolio uh, that you can um, contain uh, paper to write. You so something like that. this. Something like that. Something like this. Uh, yeah, you right, see, you see, right, you right, like, right, good, good, bad, or white kind of thing going on there. Um, um, you want to have copies of resumes. Uh, in this case. Now, multiple like, copies. Multiple copies of okay. resumes. Now, uh, in this age, this is kind of interesting. People are kind of going back and forth of is there still a need for resume paper. I was going to ask you that. Mm -hmm. um, now, let me say it this way first. A lot of things now are, uh, when the employer gets it, particularly if you apply online, obviously it's not resume paper. Okay, so, right. so much, so many things now are, uh, are done online. Oh, and, and so, right. so, so, let me say this. Um, it doesn't hurt as a precaution to have it on nice paper, just from a presentation standpoint. Okay. Again, I, I, I think the whole idea of the resume paper is an extension of your professionalism. That's true. So if you're just showing them, if you just, sort of, again, walking around the fair, you have your three to five or whatever, having that good presentation, um, that, that's a good thing. That's it's just, good. again, an okay. extension. And it's, and it's just you wanting to have the best presentation to that employer right. as possible. Okay. Now let me say this, uh, this is very important and a lot of people don't know this, it's not uncommon for an employer not to take your resume. Oh boy, wait a minute. Now what, what you talking about, Willie? What you talking about? You okay. Talking about? <laughs> it's a career expo. What do you mean they can't take our resume? So there are over the last several years have been legal implications behind people who didn't take resumes, people going back and oh. saying, I gave them my resume at a career fair, it wasn't in the database at the company, and there's been some legal implications around that. And so don't be surprised, though the resume may not necessarily be for you at the fair to give to them to take away. Don't, okay. don't, don't be disappointed if they don't. Um, the Going online and applying is their way of assuring that you're accountable for your own information uh -huh. and that it gets into their system. Okay. We can all imagine just in our everyday lives how easy it is that we can lose a document. Right. That's just going not true. from point A to point B. Right. And uh, and so that's their way of putting the onus back on you mm -hmm. and for making sure it gets in the proper database because you know, there have been times in the past where that resume didn't make it back for one reason or, or another. Okay, this is good. I don't know that many of us knew that. Right. So in that situation, if one of our career uh, fair, career expo, higher spelling career expo employers say, we don't take resumes, apply online. Uh -huh. Is that, a, is that like, is, so I won't be offended now right, because right, I know right, you're right, telling us, don't be offended. Know. Right, right, but right. then it puts the responsibility on you yes. to actually go do it. So yes. when you go do that, What's the next step? Do you follow up with the person at the career fair and say, "Hey, I did it. I did what you told me to do. I applied." Mm -hmm. What do you do? So um, generally, you're going to get something back from the company saying, "We received your information. Thank you very much." Right. Uh, something blah, blah, blah. generic. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go back to that person because we don't know if the person at the career fair was a hiring manager. We don't know if that was a recruiter. Wait, so they're not necessarily the hiring person? No, That's not, not at all. Not at all. Not Wait a minute. Okay, we're going to get back to that. Yeah, so finish yeah, yeah, that yeah, thought. Yeah, right, okay, right, right. Okay. No, 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 no. I mean, it can vary. Okay. Uh, but I would never say that all the hiring managers are at the right career there in the fair. Right. Okay, no, let's not, not at all. They, now, they, they could be, but right. not necessarily. Okay. And so, but the whole idea of you going back and putting it online sort of speaks to you own 
your job search. Right. It is not only is not at the hands of someone you're talking to. You own it. Right. And so, in a way, it's maybe not so bad that you're going back. Hey, if you go back and upload it, and you get a message back saying that you you have successfully uploaded your resume, mm -hmm. you know it went. That's true. If you hand it to somebody, you know, not to you know speak you know anything negative or, or, or suspicious about anyone. But you don't necessarily know if it got back. Right. You're that's true. You you kinda just have to hope and wish and pray right, 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 that right, they, they remember right, to take right, all right, the paper right, that they right, had. Right, and that George didn't got slip it. out or something, or the dog didn't need it or whatever. Right. So um, So once you do it online like mm -hmm, they told you to, mm -hmm, do you send them a follow up email to say, Hey, I met you at the career expo? Not necessarily and, at that point because again, okay. they're not that person may not even necessarily be the one that's going through the database. Oh, okay. But could they, if I did, is that bad if I did it just to say, hey, I met you at the career fair last that's week? That's not bad at all. That's, that, okay. that, that's a form of networking. And, and okay. it, it's things like that that mm -hmm. actually, um, you know, get their, get help uh, recruiters remember you. Because remember, that's good. if it's a lot of people at the fair, we're gonna, and we're saying, yeah, it's going to be a lot of people. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of people. You want to stand out. Yes. Yes. And and what people often do sometimes is send a thank you note. Is that a note? Yes, or I'm, an I'm, email. So, so I'm going to get to that. Okay. So let me say this. <laughs> you had to pause. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, and I, I was going to do this, but okay. <laughs> there's nothing inappropriate about an email, but again, emails are easy. Oh, okay. It it shows, in my opinion, a little bit more. Um, interest and zeal mm -hmm. if you do a card or a letter because they know you had to take a little bit more time to put that okay. together and so it's all about how you do that. I had like an employer many years ago I, I had like an interview of like seven rounds Whoa. and I sent every single person I interviewed a thank you card handwritten. Okay. I did end up, I did end up, end up getting hired and I remember one of the persons probably a year later mentioned to me I still remember when you applied and we interviewed you and you sent every single interviewer a handwritten letter. See, it left an impression with her. I can attest to that. I did the same thing um, and I sent one to every single, every person from the receptionist that, that greeted me to the last decision maker that I met with. Sent them all a handwritten note. Mm -hmm. And when I go into the office, it was for Spellman, yes. my position I, here, I, I still see some of the cards. You still see some of the cards. They keep so, the thank so you people, cards. Yeah, we delete emails. Right, you can delete an email. How, I mean, how long, how many times have you deleted your inbox because yeah. it was taking up too much right, storage right, space? Right, right. So I don't want to give the impression that emails are inappropriate. I just think that should probably be a second or third choice. Okay. Okay. And you also, there's also the timeliness associated with when you do this. Hmm. And so um, I would just say generally anywhere from 24 to 48 hours, you want to have a thank you letter done. Because remember, hmm. they moved on to something else. Right. And so you want to strike on the iron side. I strike on the iron side. I'm not sitting around thinking about all the people they met with. <laughs> oh, I just met your sister. Right, right, right. And, right. Her. and then 72 <laughs> hours later, still thinking about your sister. Right. Not necessarily. <laughs> But, Although I do have that effect. Yeah, you have that effect. <laughs> you do indeed. And uh, you don't have fumigating perfume. Right. So, uh, yeah, so you do have that, that effect. But, yeah, you want to leave the, so you want to do that as soon as possible. So, again, and all that, and again, that shows your interest and enthusiasm. Yes. Now, on the other side of that, I wouldn't expect necessarily necessarily that type of response from them in terms of how your candidacy is going because okay. they will not have, uh, Processed all that in 48, 72 hours. Okay, right. So don't you 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 do it to show your fortitude, you right. being proactive, right. show your interest. Right, right. But right. don't expect that they're going to send you a note right back. Oh, we got right. you. No, thank you so much. Right, okay. right. And back to your earlier point about the hiring manager being there versus the recruiter. That was on my list. Uh, so many, uh, most in most organizations, it's sort of standard that uh, there's a recruiter that basically represents the needs of a hiring manager. In other words, there's a recruiter oh, okay. that supports certain lines of business. Okay. Like a representative like of Like a sorts? representative of okay. that department mm -hmm. as it relates to hiring. Okay. And what the uh, happens is, is that generally a manager will requisition the need for a particular hire. Oh, okay. And so it's up to that recruiter then to go and do the legwork that's and obviously, fine. career yeah. fair is just one venue. Right. right. Uh, remember, if they tell you to send it to 
uh, the, the website, the other thing they're doing, obviously, is they're doing keyword searches, mm -hmm. uh, trying to figure out who are good candidates and then ultimately present that information to the manager. And back to your say. original point, that's why it's so important to do your research on the company right. to use their right, language. Right, 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 to use the language on the rest. That's because, good. because sometimes it may not even be a career fair. Sometimes you may do a cold call letter where you just write the company. Oh. And so, again, you want that, that resume sometimes becomes the first point of contact. Got it. And, and so you wanted to speak to the company. But that's one of the good things that's so good about this Hire Spelman Career Expo. Did we say that it's our inaugural one, meaning it's the first of many to come? The One of the good things about a Career Expo is that it's your first, you can face-to-face -face meet someone representing that company. Absolutely. That's what makes a good a career fair so good and stand yes, out. Yes, 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 yes. And I, I have a, one of my favorite quotes is, uh, it's not what you know, it's not who you know. That's how we generally hear, hear it. No. Oh. But rather, it's who you know who knows what you know. Oh, and, wait, say it again. And I'm not done. Oh, keep going. And who likes you. So let me repeat the whole yes, state, the statement okay. again. It's not what you know. It's not who you know. It's who you know who knows what you know and who likes you. Ooh. And so, again, <laughs> it's up to you. And again, see, the first statement is, is who you know. Right. Well, that's not enough. If mm -hmm. I don't know anything about you, then that's not really very helpful. Right? That's true. On a practical level. On a practical level, that's not helpful. So it's up to you as an individual to go out and communicate what you know mm. so that who you know has something to work with. Oh, that's good. And then it's very important to be likable. And I always tell oh. people, um, you know, it's to be pleasant, approachable, engaging, because think about it this way. If I don't like you, I'm not going to represent you. Wow. I don't think anybody goes wow. around representing jerks. Wow. And so, um, you know, and so it's very important. And, and I will even go as far to say, in my personal opinion, like is the most powerful part of that statement. Because it has to do with your character. It has mm -hmm. to do with your personality. It has to do with fit. And people can get that at a career expo in just five minutes of meeting They may can't get all of that. But they can get a snapshot I, 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 of it. I'm really speaking long term okay, here. Okay, good. Uh, and, and so, uh, but 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 again, so back to your point about whether that person's the hiring manager. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the point. The point is, you want to leave a good impression because you don't know that person's relationship Very good. with the hiring Very manager. Very good. Yeah, that's so, good. Now, it's not beyond a reasonable doubt that the hiring manager could be there, but that's generally by choice. Sometimes you have hiring managers that are more hands-on than others, and so that's, that's not out of the question, Okay. but generally speaking, you're probably going to be talking to a recruiter. That's that okay. recruiter's uh, job to represent that hiring manager okay. to go out, because the hiring manager is not trying to talk to everybody. They're trying to talk to that short list of what they hope are competent okay. candidates that can potentially come in and fill that position. So even though it's not the hiring manager that's at the Career Expo, that person that's at the Career Expo representing the hiring manager is just as important because you got to get to that through that person to get to the hiring manager. And I will even say, um, and again, we're kind of jumping ahead when I say <laughs> this comment, but even if you say get called into the office, even the administrative assistant, the, oh, good. the, the, the cleaning people, I mean, everyone. you have to be kind to everyone. Everyone. Because Genuine. you never know who they know. That's good. And, uh, you know, you could be, let's just say it could be somebody from cleaning services and they, you know, just happen to know the hiring manager, and they said hey, that person that came in when they interviewing, they really were rude, and mm -hmm. you know, and, and and I've seen it happen. Yeah, I've that, seen that. And, and yes. then all of a sudden, you know, what may be looking good on paper has been derailed because you don't have simple courtesy courtesies mm -hmm. uh, towards uh, people. So likability is very, very important. And that's and I and I'll speak to that too because it's so important because an employer wants to know if they send you out to represent their company. Right, right, right. What that's your correct. mannerisms right. are. What your mannerisms right? are. Right, okay. right, right, right. So let me right. pick off on that quote. Okay. Now I might I'm gonna paraphrase it. Okay. It's not who you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know that knows you Knows what you know. That knows what you know and likes you. Yes. Okay. On that point, how do I get someone to know what I know? Is that the elevator pitch part? That is that that is part. Okay. Of let's talk. It. Okay. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about the that. Elevator pitch. So the purpose of the elevator pitch, particularly 
Well, what uh, is the elevator pitch? So an elevator pitch is really a brief, uh, I don't want to say a statement, it's a brief message. Okay. It's sort of your PSA, your public service message. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, about who you are, what your interest is, and maybe some of what uh, your skills are. Okay. okay? Who, that's who bit, interest, skills. Yes. So that's very generic. Now. The length of these things, if you go on the internet, they're going to vary, but I think probably all, everyone would probably say it's no more than two minutes. You'll, you'll okay. see everything Ooh. from the from like the 30 seconds, seconds yes. to the, yeah, and, and, and it's, it's all over the place because okay. I've seen the two minute, but, but let me just say this, it's not long. Okay, it's concise. And it's concise. Got it. And so the whole idea behind the elevator pitch is really to give them this brief snippet of who you are and give them something to respond to. And so it's critical that you obviously who you are, what your interest is, what your skills are, mm -hmm. if you have time, even maybe some of your accomplishments. Okay. And we'll kind of get to that in a minute. But, okay. But those are just some things I would just encourage anyone to, in terms of elevator pitches and what they all contain, because I'm being very generic okay. right now, is to go online and just do a Google, Google search, search on elevator pitch. And there's plenty of articles out there about yeah. how you kind of set it up. Got it. But it, but it is critical. Um, and not just at a career fair. Um, you know, the whole idea of an elevator pitch is you walk on the elevator and all of a sudden you meet someone who potentially you're interested in terms of maybe the employer they work for or whatever. Mm -hmm. And at a moment's notice, can you, because that moment may be gone. In mm -hmm. other words, I'll say it like this. The opportunity of a lifetime is only available during the lifetime of the opportunity. So that, <laughs> Look at you! So, so, Whoa, wait a minute! So, mm -hmm. so, so that, that particular opportunity, that might be it. No. So you've got to be ready to put something out there quick, concise, because that person is about to get off the elevator any floor now. That's good. And Thank so you got to be ready. And so it's always just good to kind of have one in your pocket. Okay. And be ready to kind of put it out there. So not even just for the career fair, but if you're in a job search, you want to have that elevator pitch ready to go. Okay. And you want to make it so that you're not being you're reciting. You want to be conversational mm, with not it. No, not, not robotic. Not like rope. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be very natural with it and okay. that kind of thing. So, okay. you know, that's, that's important as well. That's good. Okay. Do you take notes as you're going? Is it... Is that viewed as something good to do at a career expo? Do you bring, you said we had our portfolio, do I, I'm opening, I'm talking to you, mm. am I writing? So again, that's kind of one of those things, uh, I would just say to the uh, person at the booth, uh, uh, is, is it okay if I take some notes? Okay. Yeah, that's something. Yeah, man, that just kind of, you know, you mind if I take some notes. And, and that's courteous and, you know, you'll know immediately. I mean, no one's going to say no. Right. So. <laughs> So at least, uh, but 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 again, the way I look at that too is that's a way of I'm I'm, I'm interested in what's going on enough to make notes. You, okay, okay, so it can be perceived as because, good. Okay, so yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just not flying through through the booth. Just and handing out my resume today and, and listening. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, uh -huh, uh -huh. okay, here's my resume. Right. No, I'm taking notes because I'm sincere about what's being. I don't want to miss anything. That's good. And okay. so. I don't think it's anything that would be taken as negative. Right. It's not mandatory, it's but not it, mandatory. it can be right, perceived right, as really right, good. Right, 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 right. Okay. I would just say make sure you're maintaining eye contact as you're okay. doing the notes. You may have to pause and you know, kind of give them the nod, make eye contact, okay. you know, that kind of thing. But don't just sit there the whole time doing that. <laughs> uh, but do kind of engage and write. Okay. Now, to that point, if I'm, if I'm bringing something like a, por uh -huh. a portfolio, uh -huh. am I bringing also a big purse? And my backpack or my um, my wardrobe change bag. So I would say travel light, <laughs> and uh, because you don't want those things to become so cumbersome and annoying that it's distracting mm -hmm. to the message you're trying to convey. Mm -hmm. It's distracting to the interviewer, uh, the person working the booth. So I would say travel light. Okay, as light as possible. Light as possible. You don't On that light. note, I'm going to do. I'm going to tell our alumni who are watching. Um, Thursday, usually we check you in starting on Friday, but this homecoming, we're doing Higher Spelman Career Expo. So starting Thursday, you can have the same check-in experience you'll have on Friday and Saturday as well. So if you come on Thursday, you'll get checked in, and you will have a bag that we're going to give you of your alumna um, gift and your giveaway, but it will be packaged very nicely in a Spelman 
branded bag so it looks appropriate. I just wanted to give you that, okay? So when you come, alumni, you will get um, your gift, your prize, we'll check you in, and you can go on to the Career Expo, but you will have a little bag, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. All right, now, I just spoke to alumni specifically. Uh -huh. So let me, so our Career Expo is for alumni and students. Mm -hmm. So how does an alumna approach the Career Expo mm -hmm. differently than, or is it different than a student would? Now, all these things we've been discussing, those are just the rules of the road. Okay. Okay. Kind of basic. Uh, kind principles. of basic stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think more so the expectation from an alumna is going to be great about the employer because I think mm -hmm. the assumption is you're more experienced, you're more exposed. Even for the young alumna. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, and so uh, I don't think the rules of the road changes. Okay. Um, okay. I just think there may be a greater expectation on the part of the employer uh, just in terms of polishness and and articulation of ideas okay. and right. I think those those sorts of things, but uh, but again, the rules don't change. So, right. I mean, the tire, what would you Yeah, I mean, none, none, you, none, of that, all that. none of that changes. Um, if, if if anything, for the alumni, it's even greater. It's even greater. You have an even greater expectation that you should know. You should know that. A little bit more savvy uh, with the job search. So I don't necessarily see a, a necessarily a difference. Okay. Uh, in terms of how they should approach versus, in terms of the things we've talked about, I okay. can't, uh, nothing necessarily comes to mind. Now let me, let me introduce something that I've experienced personally. Mm -hmm. um, as African American women, mm -hmm. um, my name is Jacinta. Okay. You, you, I think yeah, you know where I'm going. I, know where I'm going. I think you all know where I'm going. Um, it can be hard to pronounce. Okay. When I'm going up to an employer, mm -hmm. I just learned a quick little trick. Okay. To, how to try to get people to remember my name or say it right. Okay. But how long do you do you stay on the fact that no, it's Jacinta, no, it's Jacinta, or do you say I'm Miss Brooke? How do you okay. not get stuck in the name? Just, game? just just as you said that, I thought about something. Uh, we haven't talked about this yet, um, but uh, let's just say you have a personal business card. Okay. Uh, now this can be a situation where this can be a, of a dual purpose. Uh, you can actually, if you have a unique name uh, that's uniquely pronounced, what you could actually do is give them your card, and on the back of it, you can have the phonetical spelling. Ooh, fancy the, words, uh, phonetical. <laughs> <laughs> you can phonetically spell the word out. Okay. Uh, your, your name out. Oh, okay. And so it's a way of giving them your card. You can say... Um, Hello, my name is Jacinta, and here's my card. And just because, uh, just to help you uh, with my name, with the last days of my name, I phonetically spelled it out on the back. Of the okay. Box. So you, that's a good tip. Yeah, you've actually, and I just thought about it as you said. I don't, I don't think that's I've been good. asked that question before. Look at that breaking news. Look, breaking here. news. <laughs> breaking news. Um, and that way they can kind of they have something to refer to, okay. and, and they don't have to feel uncomfortable that they are not. Uh, they're, they're, they're mispronouncing your, your name. name. Yes, I've had Jacinta, Jackie. Just, it's like uh -huh. not, they're not even an uh -huh. I in my name. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But you can't be offended. Right. That's no, one of the no, big takeaways. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Okay. Not they might even remember you more because exactly. they, uh, you took the time to understand right, that your right. name can be hard to pronounce. Right. And, okay. And uh, like I said, I, I really just came up with that thought as she said that to me, mm -hmm. and so that's something different that they'll see too. Is like, mm -hmm. wow, they really, wow, they really are thought through thought this. this yeah. That you know. Ahead of time, they're acknowledging that my pronunciation of my name may be mm -hmm. difficult, and so I'm going to help the recruiter, and at the same time, I'm slipping them a card. Yeah, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your your name, we, we've covered a lot. <laughs> I told you we would, yeah. just naturally. Right. Um, we've covered a lot. So mm -hmm. you talked about business cards. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a good place to pick up on business mm -hmm. cards. Should you, even as an alumna, as a student, mm -hmm. have a personal business card? Are they cliche? Are they... Outdated. I don't think so at all. Okay, uh, well, what are some rules for business cards? Because I've seen some people okay. have their own personal okay. company okay. business okay. card. I'm right. like, well, you're right. coming to a right. career fair. Right. Why right. are you doing that? And so uh, let's just say this this is not some uh, kaleidoscope of, uh, you know, kind of heavily artistic card. That's not, okay. You know, you want something very basic. Uh, I always tell uh, people to go to vistaprint.com. Okay. What's uh, that? V I S T A print. Yeah. Dot com. Uh, yes, okay. and you can get, uh, I don't know what the number is these days, but it's uh, 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 
fairly large number of cars okay. for a very reasonable price. Okay. Um, and sometimes they do promotions for free cars. No, sometimes they do promotions for free mm -hmm. cars. Uh, what you're looking for here is something very basic. Again, you don't want anything that's going to distract from what you're trying to articulate mm -hmm. to the person. Just like you're a tire. Right, 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 right. Your resume, the same for your business Right, right, right. right. We, you know, we've talked about jewelry. We've talked about perfume. Mm -hmm. We've talked about a tire. So the whole distraction thing, you want to eliminate that. So I shouldn't spray perfume on my business card? Oh, absolutely not. Well, not, not, <laughs> not for the recruiter. <laughs> We're not for that recruiter. Right, right, right. Not for these recruiters. Don't do that at yeah, higher spelling, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, and so um, I just think uh, it's something very conservative. Okay. Something very basic. So probably their basic basic card on Vista Print is what you're looking for. Okay, so that's what name. Name. First full uh, first and last name. Uh -huh. um, email. Just, uh, email. Mm -hmm. uh, cell phone. phone. Cell. Um, so on a point about cell. Uh huh. Once you begin giving your cell phone number out, mm -hmm. talk about the message you should have on your cell phone. Oh, we kind of jumped to something we else. Jumped. I'm going to pull us back in, okay, but I okay. mean, so, let's go there, please. So if you're in a job search, mm -hmm. uh, again, it's your responsibility to create a professional atmosphere. Everything happens in an atmosphere. It's That's the good. atmosphere at the career fairs, the atmosphere wherever you are. That's good. Uh, you want to have a professional message. Uh, it should be very basic. Uh, no music, no rapping, mm -hmm. no, uh, you know, it just needs to be very simple. Okay. Okay. And so, um, just simple, professional, no no, no bells and whistles. On, on, on the, you know, and should it be just as concise as concise, your, just concise? Right, concise, right, okay. right, right, right. And, and so, again, it, we keep getting back to this point. There's <laughs> nothing gaudy, there's nothing glaring, mm -hmm. there's nothing distracting. Mm -hmm. Everything is just free, bare bones, and uh, just kind of easy to cut through. Not, not Should you definitely have a message? Because some people say, you have reached the wireless phone of XYZ number. Please leave a message. Beep. Is again, that professional? Again, well, it's not necessarily unprofessional. I recognize some people don't leave names because of security issues. Okay. Uh, but, again, in a job search, uh, you don't want to leave the recruiter wondering, is this mm -hmm. about leaving the message with the right person? Good. It. Got it. And okay. so, and, uh, well, I don't know how you could do this. I was going to say you could change the ring or something. Like, yeah. oh, but, you just, won't but you won't know who's calling. calling. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, dish that out. But um, possibly, you know, I would, you may, I would leave my name. I would not, because um, that's like now the recruiter calling into a black hole. Right. Or, or it could be. It may not be, but right. that's, that's the image. And that's right. That's being presented. So you may want to leave that on there. So they can know they're calling so the they person they think they're calling. Right, exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Okay, let's jump back on business card. Right, Thank you for letting me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we got on the business card. Very basic. Right. Not gaudy. Right, right, Name, right. Uh -huh. email, uh -huh. cell phone uh -huh. number. Yeah, if it's a student, um, you want to put uh, maybe your major and your classification. Okay. Even if that is that just for seniors, or even if I'm a sophomore and I might change it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, because these are relatively, you know, inexpensive. Okay. So I mean. So made for a student major class year. Right, major mm -hmm. class year. Uh, and Institution. Then, and then for an alumna, uh, you will have your degree. You do. Uh, yeah. Okay. You would have it on your resume. Hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean. I mean, you don't have to. I'm just saying that that sort of establishes you as an alum. Right, because it's a it's a business card specifically right, for right. a career right. expo. Right, career expo. Right. You're trying to put out some information relatively quickly. Got it. And and, and I would have an area of interest. Oh, like area of interest colon. Yeah, and, uh -huh. and then okay. what that is, and maybe what your what you feel are your top skill sets. Um, one of the things that That's some people good. do on resumes is they have what's called a summary statement. Mm -hmm. We talked about that last week. They did. Okay, mm -hmm. good. And then again, uh, so go back and watch the video. From go us. back and watch. I'll give you a quickie. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> they probably didn't describe it this way. A summary statement. I, I liken them for those of you who remember. If you remember movie marquees before we had the internet and. You know, we all had to go to the newspaper to see what a theater. Uh, no, I don't know what you're talking she about. She has Harold. no idea what I'm talking about. No, I'm dating myself. <laughs> but there was a time when you passed by the movie theater, the only way you knew besides looking at the newspaper or calling them was to look on the movie marquee. And if they were happy, if the movie was playing that you wanted to see, you knew to go to that theater. Hmm. 
So I see the summary statement as your personal movie marquee. You put down your good analogy. Skills, and what happens is, if I pass by your car and I see something I'm looking for, boom, there it is. That's it. That was your movie marquee, and That's I go, and I go to see you. I How love that? that analogy. Okay. How about that? See, I knew he didn't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> movie marquee. I'm writing that down so I can read yeah. that at the end. Okay. So, so, those, so those are just some things. I mean, there, there's some flexibility there. But the, the main thing is, again, a business card, you know, you don't have a lot of room to do, put a lot of mm -hmm. things on there. So you just want to put that key information that's going to help them hone in pretty quickly on who you are and get, get a quick snapshot. Sure. Okay. That's good. Those are just some ideas. Okay. We are at... Fifteen more minutes. See, I told you time flies. When you're having, having fun, fun. Fit for fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've covered a lot of things. So let me just ask you, right. we're about to summarize it all, okay. and i got to give a couple of plugs, and I'm going to list again who the employers are going to be. Okay. So in case you just tuned in, you can hear that list. Okay. Uh, are there any red flags, tips and tricks, things we didn't cover gener generally that can help alumni that are coming to this career expo and the students. Okay, things we didn't cover. Because we cover a lot. Uh, yeah, we covered a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and again, make sure uh, your resume, make sure um, if you can't find someone to proofread, I can't imagine you can't find someone, but have someone proofread your resume because uh, misspelled words, uh, again, distraction. Okay. And I can tell That's you, here, here's a trick that many people don't know in terms of how to proofread your own resume and catch errors is read everything you have on the resume backwards. Backwards? Read it backwards because... Wait, say that again. Read, how to catch your own errors. Errors as you read your resume backwards. So in other words, I'm looking at this uh, statement here on this sheet of paper. It says a large bag, briefcase, or purse of some sort. I would start with the word sort and read it backwards. There's something we do call selective perception whereby you you knew what you wrote down on a piece of paper. Right, because you knew what you were trying to say. Because you knew what you were trying to say, mm -hmm. but you really didn't write it. You didn't spell it correctly. Oh. So. Wait, let's but just my say, word, my word catcher thing. Um, it's gonna tell me. It's gonna time. make it. It's gonna make a little red Very good line. point. Very good point. So you can't totally write or spell check because words like on and no when transposed still are words. That wouldn't get caught. That wouldn't get caught. Oh, he is just full of them today. He's full of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so read the resume so, backwards. So, okay. So, so read the resume backwards. Make sure. That, oh, we didn't talk about accomplishments. Mm. And so one of the things you want to do on your resume is not just talk about the position you were hired to do or the duties that you were hired to perform, mm -hmm. but you want to talk about how well you perform those duties. Okay. Because in essence, and I tell people this way. You get paid to perform the duties of your job. You get rewarded above your pay when you excel in how you perform. Okay. I'm just going to have to play this back and write a bunch of notes because you are just packed power full of all these little tips and tricks and little <laughs> phrases. So it's not how you are expected to perform. That's You're why you got the to job. Perform. And so really, you know, it's kind of funny when I think back to the older days, of course, you wouldn't remember this. No. People always thought the distinguishing factor on the resume was colored paper and all this. No, the distinguishing factor is how well you perform your job and get results. Mm -hmm. I don't care what field you're in. Everybody's looking for results. Results. And so your job responsibilities are just a reflection of the, the job you were hired to do. Your accomplishments oh, wow. reflect how well you perform those job duties. Oh. And so let me give you some of the common ones. Now, there's more than this. This this is just some of the common ones. So if you don't... Common accomplishments. Common accomplishments. These, these are sort of the kind of the five major topic areas. Did I help the company make money? That's profitability. Did mm -hmm. I help the company save money? That's not new money. That's taking existing money and being able to reassign it somewhere else because Ooh. we were able to save money. Mm -hmm. Did you help the company save time? Time ah. is a very valuable resource that we cannot recruit. Yeah. Recoup. recoup. There's really no such thing as uh, I got to go back and make up for lost time. No, lost wow. time is lost. It's lost. And so mm -hmm. uh, it will not be found. And so, <laughs> uh, so you will... Uh, Otherwise, we'd all go back to our youth. No. So anyway, <laughs> uh, so all three of those always they have to do with money. So particularly if you're in a profit-making organization, mm -hmm. those three things are critical. But then we get to some of the other things like, did you receive some sort of award or recognition for how okay. well you performed your job? Okay. Okay. And then the final one of my top five accomplishments is, did you create some new process or procedure 
that did not exist prior to your employment that oh, added value. And that's good. And so that's very important that that not only is reflected on the resume in addition to your job responsibilities, but that also you communicate that in your conversation with the person at the uh, uh, interview table. Okay. Excuse me, at, 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 the the at the career fair booth. booth. Right. Mm -hmm. At the career fair booth. Mm -hmm. Now let me just say this. Uh, students, you're probably not going to have as many of those because you may not have had right. jobs that really empowered you. It doesn't mean you don't have any. Right. Uh, but some of the more seasoned people that might be at the fair, you probably very well do. Okay. And it's real, and that's those are just very, very important that you communicate those because that's here, good. here's the logic behind it. If you can show a history of accomplishments, mm -hmm. basically there's no reason for me to believe you're going to stop having those when you come into my organization. So it's almost like a pattern recognition. It's almost it a pattern, you. right? Oh, okay. Right. So we're we're trying to see what your pattern has been. If you have a pattern of success, well, of course I want you in my organization. Of course, right. Appropriate fit. So that's the whole idea. So those are some things, and then that's good. Two more things I'll say about that. Um, you can quantify those by using numbers. So if it's something like fundraising, you can actually give numbers. Okay. Uh, or even if it's the sales, you can give numbers. So we call that quantifying. Or you can qualify an accomplishment. That's just using with, oh, that's using good. words to show that success took place. So in other words, as a matter of fact, successfully achieved, uh, consistently achieved. See, those things imply that there was an ongoing record of, okay. of achievement. And so those are some ways. And so I would definitely, uh, if I could add to our conversation, I can't underscore enough uh, the importance of accomplishments because that is just oh, that's good. in everybody's career. And if you don't already do it, make a habit of, of uh, collecting those yeah, uh, and, and keeping up with them so you don't forget them. And I want to say, as I'm about to start wrapping this up, uh, Harold, this has been excellent. Oh, okay. You have just been a resource of information, phrases, knowledge. Um, but sometimes people have a hard time with accomplishments uh -huh. because they think they're being arrogant, uh -huh, right, right, bragging right, on right, myself. Right, 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 but that's right. not the that, case. That's not the case at all. I mean, right. it's up to you to articulate uh, those things uh, mm -hmm. about you. And so it's, it's not bragging. It's, it's really just showing how well you perform. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it shows you have a sense of confidence. Yeah, right, right, like right, it was intentional. Right. You knew right. you were doing those numbers right, and it was right, intentional right, that you were right, doing Right, 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 right. I mean, it's not, a, it's not a form of arrogance. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really a form of conveying your success in a particular mm -hmm. uh, position that you had. That's very, very, very important. Because generally, okay. like I said, that, that's something that follows. That's, that's a part of who you are. Yes, And exactly. it follows you. That's it follows what, you, and that's what the employer wants that's what they want. that's to what take they want. into the position exactly. that they possibly will be hiring you for. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to start wrapping okay. up here. I'm going to shut up. No! no! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we started out, what to wear, tired. Mm -hmm. Keep it very basic, clean, nothing distracting, nothing audacious and gaudy. Very uniform, clean look. You can still have personality, maybe, in, I, I don't know, but conveying you in your conveying your information. There you go. That's where your personality really shines. Mm -hmm. But nothing to distract the employer from hearing what you're saying because they're looking at a stain on your shirt or they're looking at the skirt being too tight or a shirt too low, mm -hmm. right? It's very, very nothing distracting. They're listening to you here and give your pitch. Uh, shoes, just wear a pump, come something comfortable. Make sure your bag, you don't have too big too big of a bag, you know, something like this portfolio that I showed earlier is appropriate um, to have your resumes or any kind of and collect your card that you're getting um, from everyone. Be, be very sensitive to the fact that companies still like, even if you aren't in the era from where they did uh, marketing, market, movie marquees, even if you're not from that era, companies still like thank you notes or follow up right, right. handwritten cards. Mm -hmm. So that's still appropriate for you to Absolutely. do. Still appropriate. Um, at the career fair to make sure you're getting the most out of higher Spelman Career Expo, make sure that you have a strategy for researching the companies and kind of drill down to the top three or five that you want to target while you're there. Um, make sure you're giving a business card and that business card, I'm going to flip the paper because I told you I take notes. Um, that business card um, has basic information for everyone. It's name, email, an appropriate email, um, yes. your cell phone number, um, making sure that your voicemail on your cell phone is appropriate. Um, we would like it if you had your name so that the employer knew who they were actually speaking, um, leaving a message for, um, but that's subjective. It's up to you. 
Um, and for students specifically, listing your major, your class year, of course, your institution. For alumni, um, this is a chance for you to um, let the employer know what your degree is, um, the areas of interest that you have, and your top skill sets. Kind of just bullet pointing those things because it's only just a small card, and that's one of the good things about a business card. You only have so much space, only only have so much real estate. Uh, one of the things you said, Keith, that was um, Keith. I'm sorry, Harold. That was so great. Was the quote? It's not about who you know. It's not about what you know. It's about who knows who, who you know, who knows what you know, and who likes you, and who likes you. And from there, we talked about having your elevator elevator pitch ready to go, so that you can make it clear what you're bringing. Right? We're highlighting on a brief. You call it a PSA, your public service mm, announcement. That's right. that's <laughs> um, that was great. A brief message about who you are, your interests, and your skills, your accomplishments. And you said, um, Harold, it can be anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes. Mm -hmm. And you said, just go ahead, Google it, mm -hmm. look on what works best for you. You have to make it natural that's to right, you. Don't right. be robotic, mm -hmm. right. but make it personal to you and make it clean right. and consistent that's with right. what you're representing at the Career Expo, what you represent with your resume, what you represent on your cover letter, and every other material or collateral that you give to an employer. We also talked about being likable. Yes, right. That's absolutely. what employers remember. People remember. Mm -hmm. Maya Angelou has a great quote where she said, people don't, don't always remember what you said or what you did, but they remember how you make them feel. feel. That's correct. Right? That's correct. So that's that being likable that's, part. That's, that's exactly right. You gave a great tip about how to proofread mm -hmm. backwards. <laughs> Who to thunk? <laughs> <laughs> Read your resume backwards out loud. Does it have to be out loud? Uh, Is it better that it's out loud? Not necessarily. Okay. I mean, but, you know, again, the read, the, just the reading backwards and just catching you. And just catching yourself. Okay. But also having someone read it for you. You need another uh, another set of eyes, so that would That's be right. great. That's right. Right. Uh, we also talked about you wanted to underscore the point about accomplishments. Yes. 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 The accomplishments, and I, you gave five of your common accomplishments in mm -hmm. kind of a category way, mm -hmm. categories way to um, mm -hmm. note them. You said, uh, have you saved the company money? Profitability. Yes. Now, say, so, say it was those. No, oh, did you help the company make money? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading that. Yeah. Pro did you help the company make money? Mm -hmm. Profitability. Mm -hmm. Number two, did you help them save money? That's correct. Number three was, did you help the company save time? Mm -hmm. Because as you correctly noted, mm -hmm. that's the one resource you mm -hmm. cannot get back. Mm -hmm. So it makes it the most valuable. That's right. So were you were you were the efforts you had um, time saving? Uh, number four, you said. Be sure to mention if you've received uh, any rewards or any kind of special recognition. And lastly, did you create a process or a procedure that added value to the company? That was important. Then you went out, went on to say, Harold, that you this thing about quantify and qualify. I think yeah. that's a really great point to highlight. Did you help quantify? A, Quantify your accomplishments by numbers. Mm -hmm. Saying I this I yielded this much profit right, for right, the company right, in right. over two years or whatever it might be, but quantify. And I want to add something to that. Please. When using percentages, you don't have to be exact, and I don't get uh, crazy with them. Don't yeah, don't, yeah, make don't, up, don't, don't, don't exaggerate. Don't exaggerate, exaggerate <laughs> but precisely, so you don't have to call your former employer. Was it ten percent or was it fifty? <laughs> yeah. No, just just estimate. Estimate, you know, okay. What it is, you mean, you know, so because with that, you know, percentages is hard to really quantify precise. So just get in the neighborhood. Okay, you know, that's good. That's a good point. Yeah. Thank you. I told you, you're full. You're full of great things. <laughs> and then you talked about qualify. Mm -hmm. uh, use the word. Use words to show your success. That's right. Consistently. Successfully. Um, successfully. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Yeah, like yes. That. Uh, you gave a great analogy about the movie Marquee. That I think is just important to say again about how when you are looking to give an elevator pitch, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that you think of it the same way. If you use words by doing your research about the company mm -hmm. that would speak, you know, that's in their language, mm -hmm. they're more apt to listen to you and come to your movie. That's right. Right? That's right. Your Which is a great movie. analogy. Your you're the star. Movie. You're the star. <laughs> that's great. That's a great segue. That's a great little plug. Um, Samara Malik from Deloitte Consulting uh, gave us star last week. Yes, skills, she talked yeah. about um, skills, uh, tasks, Task, um, accomplishments, achievements, achievements, and results. results. Yep. So that's a great tie-in. You're the star of your movie. Look how we tie that all together. And okay. if I can say, if I can pick up on that, yes. so 
you could even talk in terms of stuff. So look, oh, move over just a little. Yeah, uh, in terms there you of, are. Yeah, okay. In terms of uh, behavioral interviewing, that's really when they so our situational interviewing. That's really what they're asking you for. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so pretty much, let me just say this about the accomplishments. When you write your resume with accomplishments, you are really rehearsing for a behavioral interview. Good. Because what you've done is you've Good. identified those areas where you've excelled. Wow. And so if they ask you a question where you can fit it in, yes. you don't have to fish in your subconscious trying to figure out something. <laughs> right. It's right there. It's right there. And, and you can just speak to come, it more. And you can just speak to it. And you wow. already know that the outcome is good because you've already thought it out and you already know you did it and you can't ask a good ending on it. So, yeah, I can do this all day. You, yes. <laughs> okay, um, and that kind of summarized what we discussed today. Uh, I gave uh, the reminder to alumni that Thursday at the Career Expo, you will be checked in, so you will receive your gift from homecoming for homecoming and your uh, pre prize. So the gifts and the prizes are excellent. You want them, okay? Just like last year, years before, it's even better. It's good stuff. So when you check in though um, at the Career Expo, you will get your uh, gifts but they will be in a nice, appropriate Spellman branded bag so that it is appropriate for a career expert. I just wanted to make sure you knew that. All right, so now I said I would give the list of employers once more for anybody that might have tuned in uh, later, right? And I have just a quick update on homecoming and what's going on. So I'll give you activities really quick for the alumni. This is for alumni now. Uh, alumni on Thursday, this is the first time we're having an event for you on Thursday specifically for you during homecoming. For the Higher Spelman Career Expo, we heard you. Uh, we heard you say we need something. We need a resource. We need some kind of career service. Something. This is you, this is our answer to your cry to us. Spelman loves you. We hear you, and we want you to definitely get relevant uh, days of experience while you're here and coming back home because we know. Some of you are local in Atlanta, yes, but some of you are coming from out of state, even out of the country. We have alumni that are global, and we want your experience here to be relevant and get the most out of it. So Thursday kicks off homecoming for our alumni. Thursday, October 24th, the Career Higher um, Spelman Career Expo begins at 10 a.m., concludes at 4 p.m., and in alumni, don't go yet because right after that, the employers have an opportunity to mingle with you in an informal setting at the museum. We're having the Art of Networking Museum reception from 4.30 to 6.30, and you should stay for that because it's an informal, casual setting, so you get to learn more about the employer. Also, St. Quinetta Dover of Dover Staffing will speak to you on the, on the 24th at that reception for just 10, 15 minutes to give you the experience of how to, how to capitalize on the kind of experience that you're going to engage in at the museum on Thursday. Then on Friday, the 25th, we have more events for you. On Saturday, we have tailgate. On Sunday, we have the worship service. So look for an email from us today. It should have come to you at 1 o'clock um, p.m. Standard East, Eastern Standard Time today, uh, but we'll have more emails coming to you on Monday so that we can get you uh, all this information out to you in a steady flowing way because homecoming's here. It's here. Wait, Harold, Harold come on. It's here. <laughs> it's here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So as promised, I said I would tell you once more who the employers are. You ready? Okay, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee, Ogilvy, the CIA, that's the Central Intelligence Agency, and they really want to be here for you. The government was shut down, now it's back open, and they're going to be here. Look how important Spelman, Spelman women are. The Atlanta Braves, Chick-fil-A, Regents Bank, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, Fulton County Government, Allstate Insurance Agency, Credit Union of Atlanta, American Institutes for Research, Bank of America, Wells Fargo Company, Cigna, Dover Staffing, Edelman, Southern Company, Georgia Power, and United Acceptance. All right, this concludes this last and final, our fourth Fit for Hire series. Harold. You've been excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Round of applause, virtual round of applause for Harold Bell, our director of Open Career Planning. Thank you all. We look forward to seeing you, alumni, Thursday at Higher Spelling Career Expo. Bye-bye.